morning. Welcome to Church of the Gardens um, this morning. It is an honor to be here with you worshiping our Lord. My name is Laura Jett and I'm one of the deacons. Um, I want to make sure that everybody knows that they need a pass if they, if, in their windshield if they drove. Um, and usually I would invite all of you to coffee after the service. But this morning, uh, there's an intergenerational brunch that is happening, and you are all invited. And the Board of Christian Education will have food prepared um, so that uh, young and old can, um, can um, have fellowship together and get to know one another. So we welcome all of you to that after the service at 10 a.m. Um, anyone else? Um, we'll be holding a new membership class uh, in the coming months. Uh, I think the, the two dates are, are in your bulletin. Uh, they will be, you, you only need to attend one, uh, May 12th and June 9th. It'll be for a few hours after the 11 a.m. service, so probably around 12 o'clock. It'll be in Paul Hall with, uh, in the community uh, house. And like I said, it'll be for a couple hours uh, if you're interested becoming a member or just getting to know the church or us, that's a great opportunity for you to, to join. Thanks. Um, and this morning we welcome back um, someone who doesn't feel like a guest anymore. We welcome back um, Reverend Dr. Linda uh, Tarashard to our pulpit. Good morning, Reverend Tarashard. Oh, I also forgot to say that we have um, prayer cards if anybody needs to lift someone up in prayer. They're the light blue, green, uh, green uh, things right in front of your pew. And if you are a visitor this morning, please uh, um, let us know of your presence um, by filling out the welcome visitor card. Thank you. God, you see that this morning some of us come to you with messages of joy and good news that has lightened our hearts. And there are those of us who come with heavy hearts and with burdens of our own and burdens for the world. <laughs> Be with us. Help us to give voice to our anxiety so you may quiet our souls. Be to us, O God, the bread of life, a source of trust, a guard against misplaced loyalties and false assumptions, that we may live in harmony with all of your children and relate to each other as brothers and sisters in Christ. This we pray in the name of Jesus our Lord. Good morning, everyone. Welcome. Please let us turn to our bulletins now before you find the words to I sing praises to your name and just after it, amazing grace. Let's all stand and sing.
grace, you'll find in your bulletin.
turn now to our green hymnals. Hymn number 41, He is Exalted. We open our hearts to God, there are those of us who have requests that we wish to be made known in this circle so we can pray one for another. At this time, we lift up the names of those for whom we pray.
Ever-loving God, we come to you this morning. We come to you with hearts of thanksgiving. We thank you for being God. We thank you for giving us Jesus. And we thank you for this circle of prayer. And right now, we ask, oh God, that you hear our prayers. Those that are words of gratitude, those are the words of sorrow and despair. Hear us now. We ask that you be in this circle, in our midst, not only here in the church, but when we leave and each go our different ways. Be with us. May we feel your presence in times of trouble, in times of joy, and in times of challenge. Help us to remember how you have brought each and every one of us through trials and the past. May we always lift up your name so that others may see your light. These things we ask with humble hearts as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debt. Thank you. 
you walk away. Sometimes you ask for the key. And this morning, I'm going to be preaching about the disciples who after Easter Sunday, I wasn't here last Sunday, but I'm sure it was a joyous celebration. And it was a joyous celebration in churches around the world, except for where there was terror and there was destruction. However, that's part of the journey because when we have trouble in our lives, we have to open the door and open the door to the people who want to come and help us. They can't help us if they can't get in, right? <coughs> if the door is locked, they're going to do what? What did you say they would do? Something? They'll give up. You may be on the other side of the door and you need help. But if you don't get up and unlock the door and ask for the help, some people will give up. Others will, will try to get in. Say, hi, it's me. It's me on the other side of the door. Open the door. And you know what? That's what Jesus does for us. Even when we close down and lock down the doors of our hearts for various reasons, Jesus is always standing there. Jesus doesn't give up. <coughs> Jesus stands right there and says, open the door. And when you open it, there you will find a comforter, a friend like none other, someone who will be with you always. Come, let us pray. Holy God, we thank you for these children. We thank you that they're here in our midst this morning. For we know through them life goes on. And we ask, oh God, that you protect them and be with them. Not only these children, but the children in this community, the children in our country, and the children around the world. For they are so vulnerable. We ask, oh God, that you be with their parents and their loved ones, their guardians, their grandparents, aunts, uncles, all the people that circle them with love. Give them wisdom. And on this day, we remember the children who cry and mourn. We lift them up and ask, oh God, that you be with them, for you never walk away. And for this, we are grateful. In Jesus' name we pray. Let everyone say, Amen. reading this morning is from the New Testament book of John, chapter 20, beginning at verse 10. Then the disciples returned to their homes. Now Jesus appears to Mary Magdalene, but Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around, and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, do not hold on to me, 
because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. Jesus appears to the disciples. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. Be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. The word of the Lord. by admitting that uh, for a very long time, I was kind of under the mind there's Easter and then the Sunday after Easter. That Easter was it, one Sunday. Big egg hunt for children, all of that Lent is over. I can now go back to eating chocolate because Easter is over. But this morning, I want to share what I have learned, and that is it's a season. Liturgically speaking, it is seven Sundays that we not only celebrate our risen Lord, but the message of our risen Lord. The message to the disciples and the message to us today. And this morning I want to build my sermon around verse 19. And I read it just again for my own grounding. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. You see, it is a new way, a new beginning if we open the door to our hearts and live out the resurrection of Jesus through God's grace. God's grace for forgiveness and God's grace of peace. But that's not always easy. It's not always easy because most days we prefer to lock the door, hunker down. Some days after watching the news, stay in bed and hide beneath the covers. Considering our world today and all that's going on, some days it feels easier and safer to just quietly close the door. The door to our hearts and our minds and to avoid looking at all the evil that surrounds us. However, every time we shut the doors of our lives, our lives, our minds, our hearts, we imprison ourselves. For every person or group of people, event or idea we lock out, regardless of the reason, we lock ourselves in. Now, if we look closely to our gospel lesson for this morning, that is exactly what happened to the disciples, who are fearfully gathered behind a closed door. To appreciate the barrier they have created, we must remember last week, churches, Christians around the world celebrated triumph over tragedy. Easter, Resurrection Sunday, celebrates the victory of life over death. On that very first Easter morning, Mary Magdalene went early the Bible tells us. She went to the tomb and found the stone rolled away. As she stood weeping outside the tomb, the risen Jesus came to her, although 
although she didn't recognize him until he spoke. Now, our reading picks up later that same day, that evening. And again, we find the fearful disciples hiding behind closed doors. Their hearts are locked with fear. But Jesus comes to them. He came into the room, and only after he bestowed peace upon them did they recognize him. He breathed his Holy Spirit upon them. Jesus' tomb is open and empty, but the disciples' house is closed, and the doors locked tight. There they were, not realizing this house has become their tomb. Jesus is out and about. Jesus came to the disciples, and in every post-resurrection appearance, Jesus is there. He comes to them wherever they are, to Mary Magdalene, sobbing in the garden. To the disciples, cowering behind a closed door. He came at what was probably the lowest point in their lives. Crushed by despair, consumed by grief, overwhelmed by doubt. Jesus sought them out. Some of us have been to that experience. Crushed by despair, but you've been able to live through the power of God, through the power of the Holy Spirit, through the words of Jesus Christ, be lifted out of your despair. But the disciples have now separated themselves. They blocked themselves in. And all of this has been only one week since the resurrection. This is the second time. How is it with each one of us one week after Easter? How are you feeling right now? What happens when we watch thousands of people mourn their loved ones killed by the Easter Sunday bombings of churches in Sri Lanka? Our sisters, our brothers, our children in Christ taken away prematurely. <coughs> and one week later, one week later, where are we? Praying for families and friends that are traumatized by yet another bombing of a house of worship. Yesterday on the last day of Passover, an attack. Some lone gunman comes in and attacks people worshiping in a synagogue in California, leaving one person dead, three wounded, Evidence shows us already on social media that this is a hate crime. Hate! I believe we're as vulnerable and as fearful as the disciples. Churches have been told in Sri Lanka by their priests, by their pastors, don't go today. Stay home. We too hide because of fear, because of inner turmoil, sometimes because of guilt because of shame over our misdeeds or embarrassment of our failures to act. Where are we one week after, after Easter? Is life different for you? Are we living in the freedom and joy of resurrection that we just celebrated last week? Or are we carrying broken hopes and shattered dreams? If life isn't different, what are the locked doors in our lives and in our hearts? I believe when the author of the Gospel of John describes the house, the doors, the locks, and all of that is in what was read so beautifully by our, he's talking more about a physical, more than a physical barrier. The writer is describing what happens to the interior condition. What are the closed places of your life? What is keeping you locked up and others locked out? What is your tune? Maybe like the disciples, it's fear. Maybe it's disbelief. Maybe it's even questioning why are you sitting here this morning? Perhaps it's sorrow, loss of a loved one. 
that has closed the door of joy in your heart. Maybe the wounds from some experience of betrayal are so deep it does not seem worth the risk to step outside. Each of us has our own special set of closed doors behind which we hide. Looking for hope in things is not the answer. Looking for joy in people is not the answer. Looking for security in material possessions is not the answer. Looking for self-esteem and accomplishments will not unlock the door. But living in the resurrection brings confidence that no matter how often we slip back behind those doors, God offers us through Jesus Christ peace, love, and mercy. God offers us the restoration of right relationships, new life, Easter life. Jesus doesn't open the door for us, but gives us all we need so that we might open doors to a new life. And I believe Easter is that light that shines, that tells us help is on the way no matter how bleak it looks in our world. Sometimes it's in ways we least expect. Let me give you two examples of winds of change. Look at the small group of students. There's 20 of them who are in the aftermath of the mass shooting at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida. They formed a student-led political action committee for gun control. They are advocates these young people for tighter regulations to prevent gun violence, and some laws have been changed. And as a result of their multi-city bus tour last summer, hundreds upon hundreds of young people registered and voted in the midterm election. Their voices and votes made an impact. Or let's leave our country and look at the light through a young 16-year-old girl, Greta Thunberg, Swedish, an environmental activist. You may have read about her. She's been nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize at 16 because of her ability to galvanize a global youth movement. Inspired by the students, she has said, in Parkland, who went on strike, she too did. Thunberg's tactic of going on strike from school has now grown into a movement taken up by students in a hundred countries. A 16-year-old is holding up the light to save our world, to save our earth. As followers of Jesus, are we willing to step out and speak up against violence, hatred, destruction, and death? Will we open the door and begin a new life, a life filled with hope and light of the resurrection. Jesus transformed the disciples. And in our darkest hours, if we just peek through the door, we will see the light so clearly. We are sent out to be the people through whom God offers God's life and love. Jesus died on a rugged cross to show us his power over death. So let us be agents of re resurrection, activists for resurrection, and accept the challenge of our risen Lord. Swing wide your door. Let the light of God come in. Don't be afraid. We are Easter people, and hallelujah is our song. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen.
pray. Faith is the assurance of things hoped for. And so in faith and with assurance, we give our gifts this morning. We hope in a generous God who meets our needs. We hope in a creative God who multiplies our gifts. We hope in a mysterious God who continually knocks on our door and invites us to kingdom living. God of grace, accept these gifts and us in your service. Amen. Now let us stand and turn to the back of our bulletins where you'll find the words to turn your eyes upon Jesus.